Welcome everybody to the uh, Foreign Press Association's uh, latest press conference. Is it the first of the new year? I can't quite remember. It's be between plague and new year and uh, wars in every corner of the world. It's difficult to keep track sometimes. We are fortunate today to have a timely intervention from Hasmik Ejian and Moen Rabani, who wrote an article in the indispensable magazine, Past Blue, exposing what they felt was, uh, let us say, I, I invented a word for what I sent out yesterday, the tortusine pace of the, uh, of, of the ICC prosecutor, Karim Khan. Um, the, the, let's say, the ostensible basis of their complaint and everybody else's is that Karim Khan, a British QC, acted extremely promptly when um, President Putin invaded the uh, U Ukraine, and rightly so as well. I'm certainly not complaining about that. Uh, nobody who's concerned with justice would be. But the fact that uh, months later, with up to 30, it's who's counting, 30,000 dead, untold wounded, um, Gaza looking like classical Carthage with salt ploughed into the ruins. Um, where is he? Uh, there's no sort of signs of an investigation. And this isn't to prejudge the issue, but we have to remember that the mere threat of an investigation is enough to make people think twice. If you know that people are watching and that there might be consequences. And to do this, we have the ICJ, which confuses the issue, but the International Court of Justice, as our guests will probably help us explain, is set up to regulate disputes between states. And the dispute here is between South Africa and essentially Israel, where South Africa is maintaining that the Genocide Convention applies, which creates a statutory duty upon member states to intervene. Now, the ICJ is a different issue, and it's concerned with individual... Um, ICC, you mean? ICC, yes, is the International Criminal Court was set up uh, in many, many years ago, under Clinton, in fact, who signed onto it and then unsigned at the last minute in a typical Glentonian coitus interruptus move, um, which uh, allows for individual prosecution. Now, this is the one that uh, notoriously slobbered on Milosevic, for whom it was mostly designed. Did it? And it followed on the international tribunals for the former Yugoslavia and former Rwanda, which held up the fairly novel idea that people who politically and militarily cause mass murder and death and destruction should be held responsible for their actions. Uh, and this was sort of basic principle of Nuremberg, which was uh, somewhat shelved for all these years. So what we have is a prosecutor set up, supposedly independent, appointed by, with the connivance of the great powers, Karim Khan, who's refusing, well, to investigate. That's all he has to do. He doesn't even have to initiate the prosecution. He has to show signs of investigation and announce this. And he hasn't. So this was the basis of the complaint of the article that Hasmik and Moen wrote uh, for Pass Blue. Uh, and they suggest, and of course, those of us of suspicious bent will indeed agree, that uh, there are extraneous political reasons, <laughs> rather than the mere the just the facts, why the ICC prosecutor has not yet moved on the manifest prima facie war crimes being committed in Gaza. I'm not talking about the causes, not talking about which side anyone is on, but if anyone can doubt that shooting prisoners waving white flags, your own people indeed, the bombing uh, apartment blocks, that shooting up hospitals is suspicious in terms of war crimes, then they are on a different planet. So welcome to this planet. Uh, Hasmik, I think you promised to come in on this and, <laughs> and uh, explain, explain the world in a couple of sentences. 
Thank you, Ian, and uh, thank you for the invitation um, to this uh, webinar. Um, briefly, um, you had also asked that uh, perhaps to say a few words about my own background. Uh, I worked in the UN for uh, nearly 30 years. Uh, I retired in summer of 22, um, had worked in uh, peacekeeping in special political missions, um, eight years with UNICEF. Uh, most of my years were spent in the field in conflict situations or post-conflict. And uh, six years prior to my uh, retirement, I was the director of the, um, uh, within the Department of Political and Peacebuilding uh, uh, affairs. I was the director for Security Council Affairs Division, which meant sitting for six years, nearly, nearly every day in Security Council um, uh, proceedings, uh, meetings, um, um, SCAD, as the, the acronym uh, stands uh, for, uh, for um, Security Council Affairs D Division, is basically uh, the secretariat of uh, the Security Council. Um, actually, it was in, in that capacity that uh, my political antenna went up when in November um, 2021, Karim Khan uh, delivered his first briefing to the Security Council. And um, I had been familiar with Karim Khan's work prior to his appointment as ICC prosecutor. Um, his first appointment in the UN was a special advisor, head of mission, uh, for uh, what was called or is still called UNITAD. Uh, that's the, uh, the mission that was uh, created in 2018 uh, to look into account accountability into the crimes uh, committed by uh, ISIL Daesh, um, mostly uh, related to crimes against the Yazidis. Uh, that mission was um, uh, was created under a, a resolution adopted in late 2017. UK was the pen holder. It was the initiator. Uh, it successfully, for good reasons, um, had the resolution adopted. And perhaps then, not very surprisingly, uh, UK National was appointed as uh, the head of UNITAD, Karim Khan. Uh, we should, over we should the... explain the UN jargon. The, the pen holder is the country that's that's responsible correct. for collating the drafts and putting that's the... initiating collating the yeah. draft negotiating with other security council members etc it um uh, that's another perhaps topic of uh what uh being a pen holder in the security council entails a lot has been written uh there's a lot of criticism of the system um, um so by the by uh Karim khan was uh, appointed as special Special Advisor, Head of Mission of UNITAD. Uh, he uh, took up the post in 2018 and until uh, 2021 when he was appointed as ICC Prosecutor, he used to come to the Security Council every six months to, um, to deliver a periodic report on progress made. The reason why I'm saying this is because uh, even then his style of, um, of presenting um, had this impression, and it had made the impression on me personally, as I said, having sat in Security Council meetings over six years, you pick up certain styles, certain substance versus more um, 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 demonstrative, more perhaps, if I may say, say uh, self-centered presentation, less progress reports on progress but rather i had a meeting with that person i did i i i so that was the impression that kanim khan had already left on me and i must say uh when security council um visited iraq for the first time in um in um, spring of 2019 karim khan was there he was anxious to meet security council members again uh one was left with the impression that it had to do more uh, with self-promotion rather than the substance of the work that he was doing. Can we consider his appointment? I mean, from, from a cynical point of view, he's British, which is what they wanted. The very For that British job. British Queen's Council. And he's Muslim, which means they can say nya nya to the third world and say, look, we have a Muslim in this job. Perhaps, uh, but I am quite certain that um, his appointment as the first head of UNITAD, uh, and again, uh, UK as a pen holder, etc. cetera, he's, um, he's um, in addition to his uh, legal background, did play a role in his appointment. Now, 
coming back to uh, what I initially mentioned, he delivered, he presented, uh, he appeared in the Security Council in November 2021, six months after his appointment as ICC prosecutor. And the agenda item was um, um, the periodic report, uh, ICC report on uh, investigation into Libya. Um, it was interesting. I paid particular attention to that briefing, uh, again, having heard him in the council on previous occasions, because I was interested in two specific things. One was, um, uh, it was, I thought, quite a stretch from uh, having been head and um, senior advisor to UNITAT, uh, having been appointed as uh, ICC prosecutor. But I was also aware how poorly uh, his predecessor, Fatou Ben Souda, had been treated in the Security Council, not by all council members, but particularly by one or two uh, Security Council permanent members, the hostility shown to her. Um, um, and I wanted to see the contrast or what was it that Karim Khan was going to introduce in his first briefing. And not surprisingly enough, uh, of course, he started with a very lofty uh, presentation of his vision for ICC's work. Um, um, something to the to the effect that, as we have quoted in our past blue article, something to the to the effect to ensure he saw it, his responsibility, ICC's responsibility to ensure that the tomorrows of uh, uh, tomorrows of humankind would be better than yesterday's of the humankind. Very lofty, very beautifully articulated, uh, I must say, and, and delivered. And uh, even more so uh, when uh, he emphasized that uh, he saw it his responsibility to ensure synergies between Security Council mandate and ICC mandate to ensure that no war crime goes unpunished. Uh, when it comes to war crimes and genocide. But then what really, really caught my attention, and I'm certain uh, I was not the only one sitting in the, in the council chamber that day listening to him, he repeated three times, not once, but three times, that his priorities uh, as ICC prosecutor would be only those cases referred to ICC uh, by the UN Security Council. Now, at that time, there were 16 open investigations um, 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 in ICC uh, because the uh, Ukraine, which added then became the 17th, uh, had not yet um, become an issue. Um, he mentioned, emphasized three times. And I think the reason why he was doing so was to signal to those who were paying attention that whatever his predecessor had done, and in particular, the investigations into Afghanistan and Palestine, two issues that had uh, raised the ire, especially of the US, which had then smacked, uh, revoked uh, uh, Ben Souda's uh, US visa uh, in 2019, and then had um, uh, smacked her and a few other officials of ICC, senior uh, officials with, with sanctions. This was uh, a remarkable statement that he made. And again, this was way before even, um, even uh, Ukraine, um, the, uh, the Russian invasion uh, of, of Ukraine in uh, February 2022, 20, uh, uh, and the opening, the very rapid opening of um, the uh, investigation, ICC investigation of Ukraine. If, if I could just interrupt, um, this is significant because for those who don't know, there are three mechanisms through which um, the ICC prosecutor can open an investigation. One is through referral by the Security Council. A second is at the request of um, state parties to the ICC, in other words, a direct request by one or more governments. And a third is at the initiative of the Office of the Prosecutor, provided it is um, the decision is endorsed by what is called the pretrial chamber, a panel of judges. And this is significant because um, Karim Khan basically said he would um, neglect uh, investigations that were not specifically referred to his office by the Security Council. And it was, as, as Hasmik just indicated, 
a way of informing the powers that be that they no longer need to worry about the Palestine and Afghanistan um, investigations proceeding. Sorry for that interruption. No, thank you. Uh, thank you, Moin. Uh, very helpful. It is, it, uh, can, I, can I interrupt your interruption? At the time of the negotiations, it was highly significant because part of the package that the then civil, you know, human rights activists on the Security Council were involved in was trying to persuade the global south that this wasn't going to be a, an overloaded, permanent five dominated look after our own operation. So that's why all those other avenues were put in. And uh, the, the this is lifting up the ladder on 20 or 30 years of negotiations. That's right. Um, just to, to, to add that the two referrals that Karim Khan mentioned, uh, referred to um, in his briefing uh, in November 2021, um, two cases, Libya and Sudan, specifically Darfur. Uh, he also then uh, took a, a clear swipe at his predecessor, saying that perhaps there was a time when the uh, very um, uh, uh, little um, um, the, um, the the resources were uh, too thinly spread over too many investigations, etc. Um, just to conclude my opening remarks, um, it's to emphasize that um, the central argument in the OPED in Pass Blue that we presented was not a legal one, and as the opening paragraph indicated. Uh, we were focusing on the fact that we believe Karim Khan has, in, a, in an unprecedented manner, has politicized uh, the office of the prosecutor and thus eroded the credibility of ICC just at a time when it needs to be uh, addressed um, to restore or to, in some way, give it uh, the legit legitimacy that it deserved. So again, we have not addressed, and I'm not a lawyer, I don't have a, a background in law. Uh, my background is in political science, politics. Um, we have not addressed any specific legal issues such as whether Karim Khan, unlike his predecessor, has uh, issued preventive statements, whether a uh, reasonable prospect uh, for conviction is the same as a realistic prospect of uh, uh, for conviction, et cetera. So those are, uh, I'm, I'm mentioning this because subsequently, I have to say, we, we, we had the article published in late November, 2023 last year. Since then, there has been a huge storm over um, uh, a, a gathering storm uh, of criticism uh, regarding Karim Khan. So not only, uh, uh, from a political perspective, but even um, from legal perspective, uh, which we have not addressed. Uh, there are more competent bodies who, who are at the moment addressing, including the UN uh, Special Rapporteur for, um, uh, for, for uh, OPT, uh, even the South African uh, application to ICJ. There is, a, there is a mention, actually, that despite the fact that on November 17, 2023, five uh, state parties uh, referred um, the, the, the investigation um, into the state of Palestine to ICC with a specific request to the existing investigation to vigorously investigate the acts that have been committed that they consider as war crimes since October 7th and subsequently. And actually the uh, South African uh, application does uh, uh, state that even since then, there is no indication of any progress made uh, by Karim Khan in the uh, in the investigation of the um, into the state of Palestine. Where is Karim Khan? Well, <laughs> can you come in here, Mo? Because we we need to explain the geopolitical context, of course. Um, yes. Bear in mind, I think it's worth reiterating because all of us get this confused. The International Court of Justice is adjudicating on a claim for a preemptive injunction by South Africa that there's a sort of prima facie case that genocide is happening and the guilty party should stop <laughs> forthwith. 
this is being fought uh, on two different grounds. One is that um, the court doesn't have jurisdiction. In other words, yes, there's a murder, but it's not in your path, so you can off. <laughs> and the second is that uh, it, 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 is that this is not what is happening. Mm -hmm. um, the sort of two insubstantial arguments, one might say, but yes. they are. Uh, in the case of the ICC, the uh, the case is that the prosecutor is not investigating the people Correct. who are perpetrating right. manifest war crimes. Yes, crime and, of and... war crimes, and uh, everybody else seems to accept that there are war crimes going on, except, of course, the British and American governments, which claim this is self defence. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody else seems to believe that. Well, I, I, as you've just indicated the differences that the International Court of Justice adjudicates disputes between states and the International Criminal Court investigates matters of individual criminal responsibility. And um, uh, it, the, the ICC has a mandate to investigate four categories of crimes, war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide, and crimes of aggression. And I think what is significant here, taking into account what um, Hasmik just explained about uh, uh, Khan's indication to the Security Council that he would, he repeatedly indicated he would prioritize only those cases referred to him by the Security Council. This was several months before the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. And what, what's telling is that the moment the first Israel, uh, the first uh, Russian soldier set foot on Ukrainian soil, all of a sudden, the principle that he had enunciated to the Security Council went out the window. Four and days, it, only four days later, on 28th of uh, February. Yes. And I think it was only a week later, if I'm correct, that uh, uh, Karim Khan showed up in Kiev. Um, he announced an immediate opening of an investigation, appointed an investigatory team, was giving regular updates, and within the space of a calendar year, issued an indictment against the head of state of a permanent member of the UN Security Council. Now, again, the question here is not about um, uh, is is not about the legitimacy of the prosecution of of Russia. Clearly, um, all individuals who uh, violate the Rome Statute need to be held accountable. But compare that to what's called the situation in Palestine. Um, this is an investigation that has been ongoing for years. The request initially arrived um, in The Hague in the Office of the Prosecutor in 2015. Now, people have been seeking... Sorry, Moin. Sorry, yes. uh, apologies for interrupting. Actually, uh, senior advisor to Karim Khan, who's been uh, publishing uh, rebuttals yes. or opinion pieces, he, he, his argument is that actually it goes back even further in 2008 or 2009 under Ocampo Moreno. Uh, yes, yes, um, and 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 I'm glad you mentioned that because people who have um, been coming to uh, Khan's defense, who I should add are increasingly few and far between, have been pointing to the record of his predecessor, uh, Luis Ocampo Moreno, and thereafter um, uh, Fatu uh, Bensuda, and seeking to point to their failures. But I think the fact of the matter is that irrespective of whatever failures one may rightly or wrongly want to ascribe to Karim Khan's predecessor, um, when he assumed office, all these preliminary issues, whether the, whether the, the ICC has standing to investigate, whether the state of Palestine is authorized to demand an investigation, whether an investigation can begin and so on. All these preliminaries had been fully resolved. Um, and in fact, an investigation, at least formally, had been initiated. 
Yet Khan has repeatedly given clear indications that he considers this a dead file and is doing nothing about it. So if one looks, for example, at the 2023 annual report of the Office of the Prosecutor of the ICC, which was published in August of last year, in other words, um, uh, less than two months uh, before the current crisis erupted, there is only one paragraph in it about Palestine, um, basically saying, yes, there is an investigation. And in none of the thematic situ uh, uh, sections of that annual report, which make repeated reference to numerous investigations, um, in none of the thematic uh, sections is there a single reference to the Palestine investigation. I think it's fair to say that the ICC's Palestine investigation exists merely as a formality, and that in practice, um, it, it does not exist. Uh, there is no progress. There are no updates, um, certainly compared to uh, the other investigations uh, that the Office of the Prosecutor likes to talk about so much. That takes us to um, the 7th of October and what we have seen since then. Now, to be clear, um, the office of the prosecutor is not investigating Israel. He's investigating the situation in Palestine, which means that any um, uh, suspected crimes by any party committed on the territory of um, the state of Palestine is subject to his investigation. And here I think there are two quite concerning um, uh, developments. The first is the very clear double standards that um, Karim Khan has uh, mobilized to look at suspected Israeli versus suspected Palestinian war crimes. If you look at his statements since the 7th, Octo 7th of October, he has explicitly um, denounced and condemned um, uh, what he views as Palestinian war crimes in no uncertain terms. Um, he's in fact already, you know, pronounced a verdict on them, uh, so to speak, and using some of the strongest language available um, uh, to, to make his views on these actions known. Well, he has been very legalistic, technical, um, uh, hesitant when discussing suspected Israeli war crimes. Um, you know, may, may be this, could be that, needs to be investigated. Um, that's the first um, uh, concern. The second concern is that um, the ICC will only indict and prosecute cases where national courts fail or refuse to do so. Um, so the ICC may find that a particular individual is a war, war criminal or has committed genocide or crimes against humanity, but would not prosecute that individual unless the national courts fail to um, hold that individual to account. And here Khan has made a number of statements praising the Israeli judiciary, which to my view clearly indicates that he considers any Israeli crimes to be within the purview of a judiciary that has been repeatedly denounced and exposed as a sham in every credible human rights report uh, that has looked And also into by it. UN, if I may. Right? Yes. And also by UN exactly. independent yes. commissions yes. of inquiry over yes. and over repeatedly. Precisely. And, and I'm speculating, but we may well end up in a situation where Khan will indict Palestinians uh, for crimes committed in the context of the situation in Palestine since 2014, um, but will not indict any Israelis, irrespective of the crimes that they will be found to have committed, because he considers that to be within the purview of the discredited Israeli judicial apparatus. Can we, um, one of the consequences of this is that if an international arrest warrant is issued, for example, by the ICC. This means that it creates an obligation on states across the world, as in the case of Putin going to South Africa for the BRIC conference, uh, to arrest the parties concerned. And this is something I know that the Israeli government was extremely concerned about and uh, almost 
many senior officials consulted their lawyers along with their travel agents before traveling because several had been held across the world uh, on the basis of a universal warrant. Um, so how, how successful would this gambit be? Because this means he's not just part of the adjudication, but part of the enforcement in a sense. Well, Israeli impunity has almost become a, a basic principles of international humanitarian law. Um, you know, laws have been changed um, in, in a number of countries to ensure that Israeli suspected of war crimes um, uh, are, are not arrested and held to account under uh, principles of, uh, of universal jurisdiction. But as you point out, um, if the office of the prosecutor um, identifies an Israeli commander or decision maker um, or, or official as responsible um, uh, for one of the crimes within the ICC's mandate and indicts that person and issues an arrest warrant, well, I think this will put a lot of countries um, before uh, a choice. Um, they will have to make a choice between their commitment to Israeli impunity on the one hand and their commitment to upholding international law and the mandate uh, of the ICC on the other. And I think this is much more of an issue for European countries, for example, than it is for a country like the United States, because the United States is not a state party to the ICC, um, whereas European governments are and um, constantly um, proclaim uh, uh, the importance of the ICC and of its mandate and of its activities. So this would present a real conundrum uh, for them. But again, referring to um, uh, what you said, Ian, at the beginning of, uh, of this discussion, the mere indication that someone is being watched will tend to make them operate um, uh, a little more carefully. And we're seeing nothing um, in, in this respect. Um, Karim Khan visited Egyptian Sinai in October, I believe. 29th, yeah. Sorry? Yeah, October 29th. Yes. And and thereafter, in what many consider to be a somewhat um, uh, shocking uh, development, he paid an informal visit um, uh, to Israel, which was clearly coordinated with the Israeli government, um, which is not only perpetrating all these crimes in the Gaza Strip, but has been vilifying the International Criminal Court uh, for many years. And he went there to meet with the families of captives, Israeli captives and hostages uh, being held in the Gaza Strip and came out with exceptionally explicit, strong condemnations and denunciations um, uh, of uh, Hamas and other Palestinian armed groups. And then had, I believe, um, a meeting that lasted all of 10 minutes. It was intended to last 10 minutes, but he was generous enough to extend it a bit further to uh, to, to meet with some of the Palestinians. Yes. It created and, an outrage. Yeah, and, and Palestinian human rights groups mm -hmm. who had been repeatedly seeking to meet with him, yet have been consistently denied by his office. He was finally prepared to meet with them in Ramallah, and they were so outraged by his conduct um, and his embrace of double standards, if you will, that they refused to meet with him. That's also to recall that in November, in The Hague, uh, Karim Khan uh, readily uh, met with uh, families of, of uh, Israeli uh, hostages together with their uh, lawyers, and none such courtesy was, was, was granted to Palestinians who, who for many years have been asking, requesting to meet with Karim Khan in The Hague. Sorry, he was if playing I... to a gallery, clearly, and it's the, yes. it, what we would say, the usual gallery. We, we've got some questions coming in, and we should allow a... Uh, um, Kristen Salomi <laughs> says, Israel described its military operation in Gaza as self-defense. Can you talk about the rule of proportionality under the Geneva Conventions? This mm. is slightly veering off the topic, I think, but uh, perhaps you can, because the well, ICC... I mean, in the sense that the ICC will be adjudicating on breaches of the Geneva Conventions. 
Well, if, under Article 51 of the UN Charter, the right of self-defense um, uh, exists only in relation to the actions of other states. Uh, the right of self, and, and this has been confirmed in the 2004 um, uh, wall ruling by the International Court of Justice, a state does not possess a right of self-defense against the, um, a territory it occupies. Um, Israel has has the right to protect uh, its citizens from harm, uh, but it does not have a right of self-defense uh, to wage war as, uh, as conventionally understood. Even more importantly, um, as the occupying power, Israel has a whole range of responsibilities towards the residents of these occupied territories, what are known as protected persons under the 1949 Geneva Conventions um, that are absolute. So for example, it does not have the right to prohibit the entry of any goods deemed um, essential to uh, the maintenance. Not of only does not have the right, but it is actually uh, it has a positive uh, obligation defined, uh, yes. defined uh, yeah. as a, a war crime. Yes, and it has yeah. has has not only not only does not have the right to withhold these um, uh, items, it has a positive obligation to supply them. As far as proportionality is concerned, that I think is a more um, uh, detailed discussion, but it basically um, means that the scale of um, an attack on a particular object has to be proportional um, to the military advantage that would be gained by such an attack. And this is um, intended basically to ensure um, the absolute minimum and preferably the prohibition of any harm uh, to civilians. And here there's the obscene concept of uh, collateral damage, but that basically means that civilians can never be the direct object of a military attack under any circumstances. And as, as, as we've seen in the Gaza Strip, an entire society um, has been um, uh, walking around with a bullseye, with a target on its back. And if I may, uh, if I may add, Moin, uh, any uh, discussion of proportionality would need to be framed within uh, international humanitarian law. Correct. From inside the United Nations, did you see any signs of pressure being applied? Can you give instances of where, uh, you know, the U.S. ambassador came knocking on Karim Khan's door and said, don't you dare? Um, no, uh, but what I did witness uh, was what was done um, to his predecessor, uh, Fatou Ben Souda, as I mentioned, uh, the hostility um, uh, to which she was subjected um, during her um, periodic briefings to the Security Council, um, in sharp contrast to the way um, Karim Khan was treated by the same states who had demonstrated such hostility with kid gloves. Um, um, the, um, the fact that uh, those same countries, one or two, um, who had taken a, a, such a strong position vis-a-vis uh, -vis his predecessor, who have not made a single utterance regarding his work, uh, no, criticism, work, no criticism, no criticism, um, should tell us something. Okay. If I may, um, earlier when discussing uh, um, the issues that, that Moin was addressing, um, let's not forget that um, before October 7th, between June uh, 2021, when Karim Khan was appointed as ICC prosecutor, and um, October 7th, 2023, uh, actually, his, his first statement, I believe, uh, was on October 12th or 13th. Not a single utterance, not a single statement had been issued from uh, the office of the um, uh, pro prosecutor or Karim Khan himself. This is despite the fact that, um, uh, according to, uh, to reports, in 2022, 
the, there was a huge spike in the number of, of Palestinians killed in, um, in the West Bank, some horrendous 82% spike in the number of those, I hate to say the number, 82% spike in um, the uh, in, 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 in uh, Palestinians who had been killed in uh, West Bank in 2022 in comparison with the, with the previous year. Now, one would think that Karim Khan, who was already um, in, in, in the office of the prosecutor, and uh, given the fact that some nearly 200 uh, Palestinian civil society organizations had been demanding, requesting that Karim Khan issues a preventive statement regarding the uh, spike, the increase in the harassment of Palestinians in the West Bank, not a single word uh, was heard from him. So this is again, to put it in a context and everything I think became even more magnified again um, with the speed with which uh, he proceeded on the Ukraine file. Well, you know, we, we might note that President Biden has even wagged a finger to Israel about the casualties in the West Bank. Uh, yes, Kareem Khan has <laughs> interesting. Yes, uh, as I said, um, even even before October seven, what was taking place in the West Bank in twenty two and also in twenty twenty three uh, before October seven, were uh, unseen uh, before, unprecedented. Again, not a single word. Uh, and again, to compare with uh, Karim Khan visiting Ukraine. He visited Ukraine four times within one year, within February 2022 and March 23. Uh, he immediately announced the uh, three months uh, later, he announced the deployment of the largest investigative team, 42 investigators, um, forensic experts, etc. Uh, Ukraine field office is, is the largest uh, that ICC has. Um, now, the question to ask of Karim Khan, um, uh, including his senior advisor. We keep on hearing how he established a, an investigative team, how he's appointed a P5, and how he's going to have a D1 uh, who will be directly reporting to him. These are then, UN officials, by yes, the way. Yes, they're, they're titles, they're, they're, they're yeah. ranking, they're, they're standing you know, in a bureaucratic uh, hierarchy, let's say. Uh, and yet, uh, again, unlike in the case of Ukraine or investigation of the Russian crimes in Ukraine, uh, no further details. There is no, I for one would like to know, so he has an investigative team assigned. Uh, who are they? How many? Uh, to this day, not a single ICC investigator has visited Palestine. And, and if I can just add um, very briefly, again, taking into account that the ICC and ICJ are, are separate um, uh, institutions with, with separate mandates, I find it quite telling um, that Israel is being accused of genocide pursuant to the um, uh, 1948 Genocide Convention at the ICJ, that multiple countries have used a similar characterization um, uh, to describe Israel's conduct in the Gaza Strip, and that there has been not a single word um, from the office of the ICC prosecutor about whether this is something he's looking into, um, whether he's investigate, investigating um, genocide, and if so, what the status of that investigation is. Absolutely nothing. Um, it's almost uh, as if he's in a state of denial and in hiding. Huh? We uh, well, Rupa Shaw is coming. Uh, is asking about the Security Council. How can the Security Council send anything to the ICC for investigation? Uh, with difficulty, I think is the answer coming out. But uh, one of the questions here, rather than just bemoaning and wringing our hands about it, is what can be done about it? What means are there to put? Obviously, this is an issue that the the streets are filled with people appalled at what's happening in Gaza. Mm -hmm. And uh, how could that popular pressure be focused to draw attention to Karim Khan that the gallery he's playing to isn't the same as down in the stalls? Um, if I... Please, May I go, uh, Moin? Uh, starting with the, uh, with the comment rather than a question. Well, it is a question, but of course, uh, needless to say, um, that um, there could 
not there could be no expectation of a security council referring either palestine by resolution for investigation referral to icc uh, just as there could be no expectation of russia uh, agreeing to a um, referral um, to icc regarding ukraine um, as Moin mentioned, there are several venues, right, uh, through which uh, ICC can uh, initiate uh, an investigation. Um, uh, Security Council is only one option. Um, mem uh, state parties can, can, can uh, make requests as um, in November, South Africa, Bolivia, Bangladesh, uh, Comoros in Djibouti did. And uh, from what I understand yesterday in the, in the GA, Ch Chile has indicated that they would be adding their voice. Uh, making a request to ICC for uh, a vigorous investigation of um, what's taking place in in um, in, in Gaza. Um, there are perhaps there are perhaps uh, some some options. Uh, none of them are 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 good. Uh, I have seen reference made by uh, the UN Special Rapporteur um, for OPT, uh, Francesca uh, Albanese. Um, uh, requesting or appealing to uh, national uh, judicial bodies to initiate uh, cases where they have such ju jurisdiction uh, uh, to quarter, uh, given the very slow and ineffective uh, work done by Karim Khan ICC. Um, another uh, option, and again, um, not uh, with much prospect of success, um, is the creation of a special tribunal. For Gaza, uh, similar, let's say, what was done for Yugoslavia and uh, Rwanda. Now, but that would take for a the security same, council yeah, precisely, so precisely, we were. precisely, <laughs> precisely. But there is another option, actually. Moin and I were discussing this a few days ago with another uh, friend who's a lawyer, um, and that is um, uh, the GA possibly taking up under Uniting for for Peace uh, uh, resolution uh, the possibility of adopting a resolution for the for the establishment of a special tribunal. However, as we know, such resolutions, GA resolutions, are mere recommendations, uh, and even if that was to take place, um, it is difficult to see that uh, member states would be. Uh, providing uh, the resources, the necessary support, etc., for such a tribunal to succeed. As we know, both the Yugoslavia, as you mentioned, Ian, Yugoslavia, and Rwanda, the special tribunals were were established uh, by Security Council resolutions. If, if I can just add, I, I think the fundamental problem here is um, Karim Khan panders to power. Uh, and because of that fundamental uh, character of his office, he is not going to cross um, the United States or the United Kingdom uh, and so on. And so I think really the only way that this issue can be satisfactorily resolved is if and when a different um, uh, prosecutor assumes uh, that office. Um, there is simply this prospect that Karim Khan is going to take his job seriously when it comes to investigating the situation in Palestine are literally zero and are going to remain zero um, until maybe the last few weeks uh, of, of uh, his mandate. I don't know enough about the workings of the ICC um, to know whether the Assembly of State Parties has uh, the right uh, to revoke his mandate and potentially replace him. But even then, it would be um, a stretch. If he were, for example, a mere president of Harvard, mm -hmm. there would be huge amounts of money and resources being put into investigating every sentence he's ever written for plagiarism, for any possible default. How did he someone whose there? wife is a plagiarist, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for example. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, why why is no one prepared to devote those type of resources into investigating Karim Khan that uh, were used to investigate the president of Harvard on uh, far more nugatory grounds, it would appear. Perhaps without suggesting any, uh, um, not perhaps, but without suggesting um, any uh, uh, malpractice or any abuse of funds, etc. Um, one of the 
arguments made by his defenders, let's say his senior advisor again, who has been um, uh, writing rebuttals um, uh, related to um, Karim Khan's uh, uh, legal um, uh, critics, is that he, uh, unlike his predecessors, um, using the plural because unlike uh, Ocampo and unlike Ben Suda, how Karim Khan is the first to uh, actually allocate, uh, make budgetary allocation um, to the investigation um, uh, of, of, of Palestine, um, something that has never done before, etc. Fair enough, but then again, when you really drill down into, into details to think that um, in 2023 budget, he allocated about 1 million, just short of 1 million euros to Palestine, uh, with a larger amount, well, needless to say, Ukraine has a lion's share of the budget, but even a larger amount has been allocated for the investigation into Philippines than uh, to Palestine. And without minimizing uh, grave uh, war crimes, the allegations that have been committed in, in the Philippines, uh, for which an investigation has been initiated uh, by the ICC, but to think of the gravity, the scale, the magnitude of what has been going on, not only in Gaza, even before October 7th, uh, in the West Bank and East Jerusalem and in Gaza, and the argument being made in defense of Karim Khan that he's made budgetary allocations is, is quite, I have to say, it's not laughable because it's too serious a matter, but uh, does not stand, um, does not stand uh, on, on, on two legs, really. Um, additionally, um, uh, his office, his senior advisor, is uh, boasting about the fact that Karim Khan is the first one to appeal to donors to solicit uh, additional funds for investigation for Palestine, while at the same time emphasizing that any donor contributions to ICC cannot be earmarked, uh, again, um, is, is quite telling, uh, boasting about uh, Belgium making a donation of $5 million to ICC in response, allegedly, reportedly, um, to, to Khan's appeal, uh, again, if it's not earmarked. And Belgium, uh, Belgium has held a very consistent national position when it comes to the issue of Palestine and um, the situation on the ground. So, and support for the ICC. Yes. So, um, you know, uh, again, you know, one would wish to perhaps uh, be fair and um, look into issues where one can defend. But even having done that, I find it very difficult to either defend Karim Khan's position or defend the, um, the argument that he's done more for the Palestinian file than any of his predecessors. The facts just don't speak um, to, to such a uh, defense, to such and an if, argument. And if I could just briefly add, our article um, was entitled uh, Karim Khan is unfit for purpose uh, for a reason. Um, I think hope and expectation regarding his role on this file um, does not and, and should not exist. Well, I think we're rapidly, it looks to me uh, of British origins myself that he is he is actually very, very British. The idea that you kick something upstairs and you never say no, <laughs> you just keep kicking it down the road, <laughs> kicking it along the corridor. I'm seems busy with be, it. Yes, uh, it seems to be, he seems to have uh, completely adopted British standards on this one. Um, we have... Uh, we, we we are coming to a close now. It's it's a shame. We want to discuss this more often because it, it is important that we get clarification between the ICJ and the ICC and that people get to know um, the ramifications of what can and can't be done. Uh, because, of course, as many people outside, they simply lump all of this as the UN has failed. Uh, when, you know, the, the UN, as we know, is a many splendid thing where some points like Francesca Albanese are working very hard and work going out on a limb, and others are cowering deep in the heart of the bureaucracy to make sure that nothing ever gets pointed at them. Um, and then if I, if I may just add, um, 
the International Court of Justice is a UN institution. The ICC is not. Yes, it was set up by a party of states uh, can, because of the United States, mostly, as I remember, and, and plus others in the... Um, they're all, they're all very happy to invoke it when it suits them. I mm. mean, the... Precisely. <laughs> yes. Uh, but the, the story of the US and the ICC is especially uh, unsavory and uh, double dealing. Um, and the shadow of Vietnam hung over it, of course, because the United States would never, ever, ever have something like the My Lai has massacre happen on its um, happen on its watch uh, and, and give the massacre of a couple of hundred Vietnamese um, and wrap over the ruckle, knuckles. It would follow complete Bless, yeah. judicial procedure. <laughs> That's why we have the Hague Invasion Act. Yeah. If so, I may, the fact, please, uh, yes. you know, uh, I think it's worth mentioning Afghanistan, the fact that there has been zero, zero, even worse than Palestine, uh, the question of, of Afghanistan has been completely deprioritized. It was Africa. mentioned in some of today's newspapers that the United Kingdom has denied that the ICC has got anything to look at in Afghanistan, and at the same time has handed over 30 million in compensation. <laughs> to acknowledge victims of British um, military excesses in Afghanistan. That's like the uh, Harvey Weinstein uh, equivalent of international relations. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the US, the US hostility towards Ben Souda, towards uh, ICC, uh, preceded the, uh, the Palestine file. It was initially on Afghanistan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we... We have another conference in the next week or so on uh, the crisis in pediatric AIDS provisions <laughs> internationally, uh, equally sensitive, mm -hmm. and we'll be having more. We're hoping to have a panel uh, in the near future about the role of journalism in human rights or what can be done. And uh, it is something that uh, some journalists approach of the human rights is a partisan issue. And if you have something on human rights, maybe you should have a counter view. I don't see what the counter view is, but uh, that's what happens when you demonize institutions like the ICJ and the ICC. Mm. But I'd like to thank you both for a thoroughgoing and uh, my youth discussion. And I, I wish more of the, the, the members were in there. I was telepathically getting their questions and passing them on, I think. So uh, let us hope to see you again soon. And uh, I would like to say Happy New Year, but it seems a bit of a urination in the wind almost the way things are going so far. <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.